Hi, this is a video for problem number seven, where in chapter 10, where we're going to learn about amortizing a bond discount using a method called straight line. And there'll be another video for problem number nine, amortizing something called a premium using the effective interest method. Of the two, the straight line method is simpler. Okay, so let's. Uh, take a look at my pencil. Where's my pencil here? Okay, so we have Moss. They issued a bond at a par value of 91,000. So when you sell bonds, it doesn't mean you're gonna get the par value, but this is the amount that has to be paid back when the bond matures. So here we're selling the bonds, issuing the bonds on January 1st, 2011, and then the interest rate that you have to pay is 9% a year on this 91,000. But typically, bond interest is paid semi-annual, every six months. So half of this interest, 4.5% is paid every six months. That's on June 30th and December 31st. And this bond is gonna last three years. So at the end of the three years, you have to pay back the 91,000. No, no matter how much you sold it for, this is the amount you have to pay back at maturity. Now when we sold the bonds, everybody else, the market, is paying an interest rate of 12%. And you're only paying 9%. You cannot change what the bond or the interest rate states on the bond. So to be able to sell your bond, you're gonna have to sell it at a lower price than 91,000. Here we're told it sold for only 84,000 to uh, 91. So the first question is asking you, how much less, how much is the discount you had when you sold the bond? Okay, so here's the bond face value, the par value, and here is the amount you got. And the difference between the two is the discount. So this is like the money you didn't get out of the face value. But, but you have to pay back all 91000 at the end of three years. Every six months, you have to pay um, half of this 9% of 91,000, not half of 9% times this amount here. Okay, so that's question number one. How much you didn't get this discount? Now, if you got more than the 91,000 par value, the extra you got would be called not a discount, but a premium, which we'll see in problem, I believe, number nine. Okay, question or part two. How much total bond interest will be recognized over the life of the bond? In other words, how much extra do you have to pay beyond this 84,291 that you got? Well, the interest you have to pay every six months, here this is the six months worth of interest, and we learned in past chapters that's equal to the principal, in our case it's 91,000, times the interest rate, that's the annual rate of 9% or 0 0.09 in decimal, and you multiply that by the time factor. Now this interest rate is per year, one year, but we pay our interest every half year, so your time factor is one half. So that's all multiplied out, comes out to this $4,095 every uh, six months. And we're doing this for three years, so um, every semi-annual period, June 30 and December 31st, times three equals six interest payments. Six times the semi-annual interest equals, here's the total interest you have to pay. And then when the bond matures, here's how much you have to pay back. Even though you only got the 84291 you gotta pay back all 91000 so the total you're paying back, paying back over the three-year period is this amount here, the interest plus this par value. Now what did you get? You got 84,291. So if you take out the amount you got and minusing it from the amount you have to pay back, the difference is the interest over the three-year period. There's 31,279. Uh, Okay, so uh, let's move on to the next part. OK, 
Okay, so here in number three, we're told to fill out this table that so-called amortizes or uses up the discount. Now, what we're doing is a calculation called straight line. Straight line is the simplest method of amortizing interest or amortizing a discount or premium. We basically take this total discount. Let me get my pencil again. Total discount and we divide it by the periods we pay the interest. Remember, we're paying it semi-annual over three years. So that's six payments. So that should come out to... Uh, let me get my calculator here. Where's my calculator? My calculator doesn't want to come to the front here. Okay, so let me do it in another computer here. Let's see. 6,709 divided by 6 and I get 1,118 uh, rounded. Now there's some pennies here or decimals that we need to account for later on but for the first let's say five of the six periods you're going to use this amount. Okay, 11, 18. So let me scroll down. Oh, there's my uh, calculator. I guess the pen and the calculator can't show on the screen at the same time. Okay, so in filling out this table, here is the date we're borrowing the money. Here is the date we're borrowing the money. Okay, pencil. And what we're recording here is the um, par value, that's 91000 This is the a bond payable liability recorded with a credit and we're going to subtract out this discount. Discounts on bonds payable as you've read of course in chapter 10 are recorded with debits, a contra liability. So when you combine the liability with the contra liability you're reducing the liability to get this smaller amount. Here we call it carrying value. This is the amount of money we borrowed on this date. So this now is the discount that has to be reduced or amortized over the life of the bond. And if you remember in that calculation I had just done, let's divide this by six. So every um, period, every six months, we're going to reduce the carrying value, reduce the discount and really increase the carrying value by that 11, um, 18. Okay, so here's the original discount minusing it from the par value to get the carrying value. And then the next period we reduce it by that 11, um, 11 18. Okay, one sixth of this. Reducing the discount, taking the original carrying value, minusing the discount to get the new carrying value. Again, next period, par value minus the reduced, reduced by 11, 18 discount to get the new par uh, carrying value. Notice the discount is going smaller and the carrying value going bigger and we do that for one, two, three, four, five, six periods. Now notice in this last period what we're doing is not this 1118 but we're plugging in a number to reduce the discount to zero and by doing that here you can see now the carrying value is equal to that par value that we have to pay back. Okay, Again, here's the amount we had borrowed and here's the amount that you have to pay back. The difference is this discount we're using up, really increasing the interest expense over the three-year period. Okay, so this is the straight line method to amortize, to use up the discount. You can also amortize premiums if you had extra money you got over the par value that would reduce the interest expense. Okay, So go on to that problem number 9 and you'll see a different method of amortizing I believe a premium.